So, welcome to Riga National Library here in the capital of Latvia on this last day of the Baltic Sea Festival. We're very happy to host this talk here tonight. Um, my name is Fredrik Wadström. I'm a, a journalist at the Swedish National Radio at the Arts Department. And I'm here as a, a guest for tonight. But to my side, I have uh, two um, internationally acclaimed cultural figures of, of Latvia. Um, the writer Nora Ikstena, uh, mainly known in the last years for her novel Soviet Milk in Swedish Modersmjölken or Mother's Milk. Uh, we're going to talk about that later, but welcome. Welcome. And uh, also Raymond Stiguls, the composer um, whose works have been also traveling around the world for, for some years now, and, and we can talk about both your work and your collaborations as well. Um, after the, this talk, uh, there's going to be a, a streaming of uh, the concert from the Bärvaldhallen of Händel's Messiah by the Swedish Radio Symphony Orchestra and the Radio Choir, so anybody who wants can, can stay and, and listen if they want. But um, Nora Raimunds, I, I just want to talk a little bit about, in the beginning, your meeting, because you've been collaborating, but also known each other for a while, and, and it's got to do with Sweden, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah it was, uh, okay. Yeah, it was, uh, it was uh, interesting. Uh, 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 we met uh, in, uh, in Gotland, in, uh, in a writer's house in Visby. Översätta yeah, centrum, as we say in, in Sweden, yeah. yeah. So, actually, in library. <laughs> oh, you met in the library? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was that was um, uh, a bit divine situation. So I went to Gotland to Baltic Center of Writers and trans Translators to write my book about Iman Zedonis, and I was uh, kind of like I'm thinking that I hope I will not meet any Latvians there. You will that you will not meet any not Latvians. Not meet any Latvians there, and then I was sitting in library and suddenly. I heard Latvian language, two guys speaking Latvian. So I was uh, disappointed. <laughs> and it turned out that it was uh, Raymond Stigels and the photographer Janis Mednis. So, and that's how our friendship started, actually. Yeah, it was in uh, 2006 or seven. yeah. Yeah, and then I remember that on uh, next day, it was just like, you know, you, you meet people and suddenly, at the moment, you, you feel this kind of, not a, maybe not attraction, but this deep understanding to each other. And then I proposed to Raimonds and Janis to go to Fore. Fore? Yeah, yeah, to see Ingmar Bergman's place. And Ingmar Bergman, actually, on that time, he was still alive. But, of course, we didn't meet. Me, met him. And then we went there, and I still remember that we were eating this um, um, Gotlandic hearing sandwiches, oh. sitting and uh, watching on Raukar. Ra yeah, 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 Raukar. And that was uh, how our friendship started. Our friendship as uh, friends, and then later on, I mean, all, all the big uh, story of uh, our cooperation in music. But that's, I mean, this tiny moments of life. And Me meeting in Gotland. Meeting in Gotland, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that was, I mean, we're sitting now talking during the Baltic Sea Festival, and the Baltic Sea had a very uh, specific meaning to, to bringing you both together at, at Gotland. So how come you started working together? I mean, you, you were writing novels and non-fiction books, and you were composing. How, how did the collaboration start? Actually, I don't remember the first moment. There's one problem with uh, writing music, uh, because uh, when you have to write music for a choir, uh, you, you need lyrics, and uh, so, so, and, so... And as a Latvian composer, I, I mean, I assume that choirs is a very important yeah, part of... Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. And uh, that's how we started uh, uh, working together. Uh, there was a... Um, 
uh, I'm looking for for uh, for uh, uh, lyrics for for this uh, oratorium Duat Dieviņi Give God, and uh, it was in uh, 2008, and the uh, premiere was in uh, San. Peter's uh, Church Cathedral in Riga. This, uh, that was our first uh, work together. And I still remember that uh, thing that uh, Raymond wrote. It was a, an like oratorium. This do they when you give give God. And I was kind of like I I was saying uh, to Raymond that I'm not a um, poet. I can just combine the texts or maybe just choose the text for the oratorium. And then he said that he needs one main song. And I'd, I I really don't remember the moment with, when the idea of this Duat Dieviņi, this song came, like uh, literally came into my mind uh, as a text. But I still remember that moment that I went to Tulsi which is the hometown of Hometown, of yeah, where, where Raimonds is living still, Murnieki. And he had at that time the small studio uh, upstairs. And then he, he just said to me that uh, he, he thinks that he wrote a song, the main song for our oratorium. And then we went up, and it was uh, a bit cold. And he gave me a blanket. And he was sitting on a p piano and uh, playing this melody and singing by himself. And at, th at this moment, I said, this is the song, really, this is the song. So that's how it was. And then it was oratorium, and then it was a big performance at the St. Peter's Church. And afterwards, it became also a song for a song festival in Latvia, and it was uh, like... Yeah, you know, the, like the song has continued to have yeah. a, a life of its own, right? Yeah. yeah. How, how has it been? What, 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 what role does this song play in, in Latvian music? I mean, is, it, is it performed every year? And, uh, so, uh, <laughs> the, uh, if, if you talk about Duat it, yeah. uh, it, uh, it came from this oratorium. It's, it was a main song, and, uh, and uh, singers for choirs start to sing this song uh, separately from this uh, oratorium. And, uh, and then in 2013, there was a, a song festival in the measure parks, uh, uh, where it was uh, uh, 15 or 16 maybe more thousand uh, singers and uh, that was the uh, first time for me and uh, for Nuara uh, that's the, uh, uh, as a debut in uh, this uh, huge uh, festival that was very emotional moment in my life actually when you heard this uh, big crowd singing your song and uh, uh, and I still it, remember that Raimonds was sitting on a stage uh, playing piano, but I was sitting in public, and uh, I I can imagine what he felt, but what I felt so because I was like looking uh, from the public point of view, and it was amazing. And actually, it was uh, it was performed twice because the people like applauding and they said so. Oh, you, you had to repeat it. Repeat, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but but remember this spring. I mean, this song is like a snowball. So the Raimonds invented it, and then it was uh, it was for all small choirs and in very many variations. And this spring suddenly comes an email that the choir in America uh, from Chicago from Chicago <laughs> they uh, they learned Latvian. Uh, language, and they were singing this song online in Latvian, pure Americans, and that was really something. So it's. Uh, I think if you are kind of like if you are having this, uh, I mean, this nerve on your fingers, sometimes it goes, 
you know, worldwide, and you never know how. And you're not a poet, but still you get Americans to sing in <laughs> Latvian your, <laughs> your, your no, song. No, I, I, I don't consider myself <laughs> as a poet, still. <laughs> So, and then, I mean, if we talk about still a bit, little bit about your collaborations, I mean, you, you, of course, you do a lot of other things as well, but since I have you both here, uh, I mean, we have also the Book of the Sea, um, also thinking about the, the Baltic Sea and, and mm -hmm. so this festival, I mean, that's really about the Baltic Sea, uh, a, a cycle of songs, uh, could you describe it a little bit? Maybe uh, you don't know. Uh, the, the idea came as a mm, the idea came from Ventspils, uh, which is a city down to the sea, uh, because uh, they were opening the big concert hall and they wanted to have a oratorium. For and this the, is only two years ago. Right? Yeah, that's yeah. only two years ago. They wanted to have this. Uh, oratorium for opening the, the big concert hall and then they asked uh, Raimonds and me to write uh, so d d just a song just an oratorium devoted to Ventspils yeah 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 and then we started with Raimonds to think about what what, what we can do and of course this uh, a subject of the sea and everything what's happening around the sea, refugees, uh, the um, same, uh, Livonian things, yeah. everything. And it, it came naturally that we made this. Um, so I made a libretto and Raymond started to work on... And then it turned out that um, we managed one heat again, yeah. <laughs> the I, sea of love. <laughs> I, have, I have to say, we have good connection with Ventspils. I, 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 I was a student uh, there, and uh, I, I was studying there, and uh, Noor was... Uh, uh, Noor's ide idea was uh, about uh, a writer's house in Ventspils. Uh, in, uh, in, uh, so, so we are good, uh, have good connection with Ventspils. So, and uh, if we... Talk about uh, concert hall. So, there uh, uh, for me, uh, uh, it was uh, uh, there. Uh, there's a uh, uh, um, uh, organ concert uh, organ in this hall, and uh, they have their own organ. Yeah, yeah, it? and uh, and uh, that was uh, for me was big challenge to wrote this uh, this. Uh, uh, oratorium, so, so, but I think uh, we, it was it was it was <laughs> good, yeah. But the commission didn't say anything about using the sea as a theme or no, a no, metaphor. No, 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 no. That that came from you. Yeah, yeah, and I also I, I still remember that we have a joke with a very famous and brilliant Latvian poet Mara Zalit. Uh, she uh, she's she's writing poetry all of her life, and suddenly she wrote a book of prose. And then, uh, when I wrote the the, the words for the uh, Sea of Love for Raymond's, she called me and said, "Nora, you are not going to." turn on poetry. I said, no, <laughs> Mara, no, no, no. I'm just, you know, I'm just writing when Raymond's asking me to write. And that's uh, kind of like, uh, for me, it's a very, I don't know how to describe it, but when Raymond's is calling me and saying that he needs something for his music to uh, maybe to find some good poem, as I found poem of Dzintar Sodoms, yeah, or, yeah. Yeah, or just Nora, but you can do it, you can write it. And I'm just, I'm just writing. But I don't consider myself as a poet, but I mean, the friend is asking me, <laughs> and I'm just writing, and that's, that's how it goes. But uh, this song, The Sea of Love, it became really kind of a one of the, I think, of the most romantic and most deep romantic um, choir and solo songs for, for Latvia in recent times, I need to say.
Yeah. I mean, I don't, since I don't speak Latvian, I don't understand the words, but it's a, it's a beautiful cycle of songs. But what are the different sort of under themes in the, in the song? I mean, there, I know there's one about the refugees, which I, I assume is something about with the, by the end of the Second World War and, and yeah. refugees coming over the Baltic Sea to, to Swedish shores, actually. The idea was to show the sea as a, like a mother sea, uh, which can uh, have different, so to say, voices or faces, like sea of love, sea of betray, uh, sea of happiness, sea of hopes. And then we, uh, I mean, uh, in a libretto, I wanted to put these meanings, uh, not only these philosophical meanings, but also like uh, very precise historical facts. And uh, it goes for this refugee sea, because it was 1944 when many Latvians uh, go, uh, went exile. And the one way was to escape from Latvia to Gotland and um, later on to mainland, to Sweden. And we have this literary saying like last boat. Uh, the, the people were waiting for last boat to go from Sarnate coast to Gotland. And that's, I think, what we put in this refugee sea. Yeah, and uh, and I put uh, my personal story with... Uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, there was uh, when I was a student in, in Ventspils, I, I, I rent a room from an old lady, and uh, her son escaped uh, from uh, Ventspils to Sweden in 1965. On a boat. On a boat, yeah, and uh, Latvia uh, was uh, part of uh, Soviet Union, and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, and, uh, and sh uh, they they can't uh, meet for. Uh, for uh, 24 years, and uh, in uh, 1989, uh, uh, we 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 went to St uh, Stockholm uh, to to uh, see uh, met uh, this uh, son Valdis, and uh, and uh, and I saw this uh, first moment uh, when when um, my my. Uh, your landlady? Yeah, landlady met uh, uh, her son, and there was a, a wall from glass, and uh, and uh, and they look at each other for five minutes, and that was uh, for me very emotional moment. Yeah. And how old were you then? You were very young then. Right? I was uh, 16, 16, mm. and she she was uh, close to 80. And in the terms of uh, like lyrics, it was it is a very known uh, the Latvian folk song "Zagu uh, Zakuku," which means "cuckoo is cuckooing." So I don't know how to describe it in English, uh, but it's it's mainly mm, uh, it's it's most popular for uh, like exile Latvians. They were singing it because uh, the meaning of the song is that uh, uh, there is a two sisters. Uh, the one is living on one side of the sea and the other on the other side. And uh, I mean, they are hoping for the bridge when they will have the bridge over the sea to meet, meet each other, very symbolically for Latvia being split in two sides. Uh, no, after the World War II. People living on the outside yes, and, and yeah. people staying in right. in Latvia. And then I, I just I proposed to Raimond that maybe he can use this folk song. And the folk song already um, have its melody, but Raimond wrote a new melody for that folk song. But and the words are from the Yes, the words song. are the traditional, traditional, uh, folk song words, but uh, he wrote a new melody, and it's 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 really amazing. And in Tigul counts when um, when I heard it, it was a, it it is a solo of the boy singing this Zagu the Kukua, and it's um, it it really sounds like in a kind of like new contemporary level this old song. 
So, yeah, uh, so many amazing things that you've accomplished together, but Nora, you have also had a special period in your life the last couple of years with, uh, after writing several novels, suddenly one novel just takes off and, and travels around the world, uh, Soviet milk or Modersmjölken in, in Swedish. Um, it came out in 2015 in Latvian, and now it's 35 languages so far, and just... About. <laughs> yeah, just continuing to find new audiences. It came out in Sweden last year to... Uh, well, big acclaim is not to put it mildly. I mean, it, it's, it's really uh, been a big success, not least in Sweden. Um, what has this period been like for you? Uh, th that's mainly for a Swedish audience, and I need to say that the Swedish translation is a very special thing, and I want to mention the not to mention, but to kind of like to uh, <laughs> praise to p mm. yeah to praise the name of Joris Kronbergs, the translator of. Uh, uh, mother Milk into Swedish. It was a special story because it was his last translation. Uh, and uh, I think he, he worked on this translation with all the efforts, with all the deepest feelings. And uh, I, I'm very happy that he was still alive when we were starting to get reviews um, in Sweden about this very because the reviews were really something special. I mean, it was yeah. everybody loved the book when it came out in Sweden yeah. last year. And also, and also, this uh, uh, Swedish translation as it, the, in in this kind of yeah, huge snowball effect of mother milk in the world. Mm, it is an example because it happened during pandemia, oh, yeah. and I, you know, I I I wanted to go or. Also, the publisher wanted me to go to Sweden several times, but it didn't happen. And then you see that the book can work itself, so without the, the um, without the author, like not not uh, the author not this uh, is not coming or it's not possible. And then I was starting to get all the reviews and all the the people reactions by Facebook and everything. So. And I think it's 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 very good that uh, that the reading is so important, and the story kind of like came from the heart to heart. And uh, I don't think that the Swedish audience is so uh, open for the, maybe for the unknown literatures, but it happened. And well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> maybe they are, but but yeah. anyway, maybe you should say something about the the content because it's a it's a very interesting novel because it it works on several levels at the same time. On on one level, you have the uh, several generations of women mainly uh, that whose story is being told um, in in sort of first voice by different people. And then, um, especially like a, a daughter and mother story that, that sort of you, you hear the story from both of them going back and forth. But then you also have the story of, of uh, Latvia under Soviet occupation, uh, which is like, it, it's not really uh, in the front of the, no of the story, but it's like an undercurrent that goes on through the story. It's a very interesting choice to choose such a a long period of time. It's from the early 40s to the late 80s. Uh, how, yeah. how did that come about? Yeah, but that's amazing. So the, the starting with our uh, new independence from 90s, uh, we in Baltics, we think that the whole world knows our story, but that's not true. Because traveling with my book all around, I, I just see that the people uh, are not so deep in history. They actually don't know what happened. And through these real stories, like in Mother Milk, this is a story about uh, the mother and daughter during this period of uh, 1969 till the Berlin Wall's collapse. Uh, and I think that's the best thing, how to learn history through real stories. Uh, but now I'm reading the books about 
I don't know about um, different periods of history, I always looking for some really personal story which uh, combines with, um, uh, with this big history. And I think that's, that's a kind of like a, a big success story of that book because I, I, didn't, I didn't think about that when I was writing it in 2015 because I was thinking that I'm writing uh, the book to memory of my mother. That's all. Uh, but it turned out that uh, it's uh, also a story about the whole period. And I need to add that this is just a one book in a series, We, 20th Century Latvia, uh, which was an amazing breakthrough for Latvian contemporary prose. Uh, the in, in what way was it a breakthrough? Breakthrough, it was in a way that uh, it was a brilliant idea of Latvian writer Gunda Grebsche. Uh, she, she thought that the contemporary writers can choose each one period of Latvia and then write novels about this period. And I think for for readers and for ordinary people and for reading people, it was uh, kind of like looking back to the history from personal pain, uh, point of view. And um, so it was am amazing things. Uh, the people were standing uh, for books for this series uh, in, in, in Latvia. lines in, in, La Latvia. in Latvia, in lines, in li uh, libraries. And they even invented kind of one night uh, 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 reading, like you are getting the book for one night and you need to read it from libraries because there are no more books. And I think it's, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a great breakthrough for like contemporary prose. The this is interesting because I, I guess it works differently in different places. In Latvia, people do know the background story, but outside of Latvia, uh, it's also a very interesting story about what the Soviet Union was like, not just in Latvia, but just as one example of what it could be like for these people, because it's very sort of everyday life, very sort of simple everyday things that, that tells you what it was like to live in this situation. And, and when you think, think about it, yes, we heard a lot about the Soviet Union, but these very simple everyday things, we didn't follow that much. And to see such a detailed story, it's kind of unusual. I, I don't even know where to look for it if I if I want to try. Yeah, that was that was amazing in Japan. I had a reading in uh, University of Tokyo, and uh, th because Japanese translation came out, and there was a students Japanese students asking me questions three hours. Three hours. Yeah. <laughs> Because Japanese, they are very precise, so they are, <laughs> you know, when they are reading the book, it's like forever. And uh, uh, so, and it's interesting, uh, and it's, it's so, um, like, it's so full of hopes that the people in this world still want to know about what, what was happening, about history of different cultures and different... Mm, historical movements and everything, so that they are not like you know closed minded but they they want to know what happened because the we we still understand what happened in the past can happen in future, and we need to have some kind of lessons maybe from the past to be wiser in future. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we could talk forever about <laughs> Mother's Milk. It's such a rich novel, and uh, it, it's going to probably continue traveling for, for a long time. And uh, uh, it is out in Swedish uh, since last year and, and available in, in, in Sweden. Um, I was thinking also about, I mean, you are both very active in, in creating um, environments for uh, music and literature. Uh, uh, Raymond Stiegels, you have a, a festival in your hometown in, in Tulsi that, <laughs> you, you, that you actually you, you started this festival. Yeah, it was. At, uh, uh, I started. It was uh, 2011. Yeah, it was almost 10 years ago. And uh, it was 10 years ago. Yeah, and 
It's it's uh, idea came from this place actually. It's uh, Tigulkans. Uh, the the name was this hill is uh, after my grand grand grandfather uh, and um, it's it's a uh, it's uh, it's a ni nice place. Uh, there's a um, oak ring and it's uh, like uh, uh, um, like like a cathedral uh, and uh, not in a natural way. And uh, we started this concert uh, with uh, uh, guests from Iceland and uh, from Gotland, actually, and and uh, people uh, li like audience li li like that. Uh, uh, these the, the, those concerts and uh, it's very uh, now it's a very important. Uh, uh, for me, it's uh, it's it's. it's it, uh, I didn't call uh, uh, this uh, event uh, as a concert. It's uh, more than uh, kind of kopa kopa uh, togetherness. <laughs> togetherness, it's because it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's, uh, it's for free, and uh, and uh, it's um, it's a very nice evening. Uh, uh, so and how far is this from Riga? I mean, where so are we? We're about 100 kilometers from Riga. And actually, Raimonds, uh, during these years, Raimonds invited musicians from Iceland, from Georgia, from Armenia, from Gotland. From England. From, from England. <laughs> and it's like, you know, the small hill, uh, like, uh, like from the point of view of the big cultures, big cities in the middle of nowhere, but it's, uh, it's a gathering of, of, of such a uh, deep world music. And I mean, everybody is happy to be there. Uh, There's a very good energy uh, behind this uh, music. And uh, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, it, it sounds amazing. I mean, I'd love to go there sometime. And, but Nora, you had also uh, com contributed to having this literature center in, in Ventspils? No, it's an it's a international writers and translators house in Ventspils. And again, thanks God to Gotland. Really? Yeah, because the idea came into my mind uh, when I was going to, uh, and writing at the Baltic Center of writers and translations on Gotland in Visby. Seeing and the center and yes, how it works? Yes, seeing it's the center and how it works. And then I thought that uh, uh, why, can, why couldn't we make it in, in Latvia? And of course, Ventspils being like very close to the sea came in my mind. And at that time, uh, we had a marvelous uh, Minister of Culture, Helena Demakova. And I, I went with the idea to her, and uh, so we went to the major of Ventspils, and uh, we found this uh, building, which belonged to municipality, and then somehow we managed to, to have the budget money for, uh, the, uh, for the beginning to restore the house. And now it's for already, it, it has been founded in 2006, and it became uh, now one of the most important uh, writers and translators houses in Europe. So many writers from all, whole world came there. And they, they come there for a period to, to yes. work there? Yes, it's like, it's like a writer's house. Uh, the writers and translators are coming for a month, and they are having a grant. It's a, it's a, if, uh, I mean, it, it's the same system the European writers' houses have. But Ventspils is, is a really special place, but the idea was born on Gotland. And the first cooperation, so to say, sister uh, for Ventspils was uh, the center on Gotland. So that's, I mean, but I think the Gotland is an amazing place. I think it, it doesn't belong to Sweden, it doesn't belong to Latvia. It's independent island in between Baltics and Sweden. And it's a kind of like a bridge, cultural bridge and cultural kind of 
historical bridge in between these, uh, uh, these, these two geographical places. And uh, uh, I hope uh, it will unite them. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> so um, I was just thinking we're, we're sort of getting to the to the l later parts of this talk. So before we end, I, I can't really skip this fact that uh, Raymond, you're also you're not just a pianist and a composer. You also play another instrument that came to you uh, after having played a piano for a long time, called the hang. Uh, could you describe what it is? I mean, I've seen you play it in different yeah, concerts, yeah. but... Yeah, um, I saw this uh, hang uh, in a concert, uh, in, in Björk's uh, concert in 2005, and I, 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 I love, this, uh, love this sound, and I'm uh, looking, uh, where can I buy this instrument? And, uh, okay, could you describe it, what it looks it's, like? It's lo it looks like... Uh, in, uh, NLO. NLO, yeah, yeah, like a spaceship, and uh, and, uh, and it's about uh, this big, right? A bit, little bit a bigger. Bit bigger. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and uh, I, I'm, um, I, 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 I can't find any information about this instrument in internet, and, uh, and I was surprised how how can it be in, and and then my friends in Switzerland. Uh, 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 called me and, uh, and said, uh, we find a pl uh, uh, place in Bern, there's a family, uh, they made this hang, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, but you, you, you should go to Bern for yourself, uh, and uh, because there's uh, some rules about uh, buying this instrument, and I, 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 I think it's not impossible, <laughs> but, uh, but okay, I, I will, I will, uh, uh, I, I was in Bern and I, I found this place and uh, met uh, this uh, 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 man and uh, who made these hangs and uh, we are talking about music and uh, and uh, after uh, one week we met again and and, and, and he heard my music and uh, he said. Uh, so, so I, I heard uh, uh, the sound in your recordings, and uh, I said, yeah, maybe it's uh, a flageolet it's from guitar. Uh, they sound uh, very similar to a hang. And uh, so, so actually, there was a, a line for two years. Uh, you had to, to wait two years to, yeah, to yeah, get one. Yeah, I had to get one. And uh, so, but we, we, we. Uh, uh, he said uh, there is uh, some kai uh, exception exception ex, ex, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 for, for, and uh, so i get one and so uh, that was for me uh, with hang it's a, it's a very bigger relationship with, the, with this instrument it's it's a surpri uh, maybe surprising should, yeah maybe we should describe a little bit it's, it's made of metal yeah it's and made it's got like metal. small holes yeah to, yeah to to and and it, inside it's it's like a empty, empty inside yeah, yeah. and it creates when you you hit it it creates like not, chimes not, uh, not, hit not it. hitting it's uh, it's a touch oh sorry yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and uh, it looked like hitting to me but yeah yeah uh, I, did, the, I never played it so yeah yeah, yeah. so and yeah it's, it was interesting and uh, when I get this hang uh, um, uh, conductor Maris Sirmais who was conductor. Uh, um, um, for uh, for co uh, co uh, choir Kamar, and uh, he said maybe you can uh, wrote some music for hang and choir, and uh, and I I I, I remember I I I, I, uh, I have a poem uh, for it, uh, I wrote this poem for dedicated to my father, he passed away in uh, 1996, uh, uh, and. Uh, Father for me was uh, my best friend, and uh, so I I, I I I I take this poem and the uh, poem uh, was uh, name was a Moonlight Sound Design because my my studio was in my father's house in the Arctic room, and there and when I 
worked at night, there was a moon shining uh, directly in this room. So uh, the poem um, was uh, dedicated for my father, and in, two, uh, in 2010 I wrote this uh, song for a choir and hang, and the poem was in English. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, we went to Russia, to Nizhny Novgorod. There was a big music festival, and then uh, we, we performed this song in Nizhny Novgorod, and some Russian guy filmed this uh, uh, performance with his uh, with phone and put uh, this record uh, to YouTube. And after three or five, uh, three or four years, uh, I, I, uh, I started to... Uh, uh, to get, to get uh, messages from... Uh, from United States, from conductors, uh, where, where, where can we get score for this music? And an interesting uh, thing uh, that I didn't answer to, to anyone. And, and then I got married with uh, Kitty, and, 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 and she said, uh, you, you have to answer everyone. And uh, one evening, uh, there was a 50 or more messages uh, for a question for where can we get the score? And, and finally, we went. Uh, 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 we were invited. We were invited to, to Minneapolis, and uh, there was an American conductor congress. Uh, for, for, there's a big event for maybe thousands on, or, or of people, uh, which is uh, works with. Uh, Choir music in the United States, and and uh, we performed this uh, this song in Minneapolis. And uh, after some concerts, uh, I I met a, a man from uh, from Schirmer publisher and uh, owner actually. <laughs> and, owner of a publishing house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he uh, and we, we, uh, we met, and he, he said, uh, maybe I, w I would like to publish your scores in the United States. And and uh, I, I, I said, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> and uh, and uh, the conductors from uh, from choirs, uh, they said, you are you are uh, mad. <laughs> they, it, uh, um, he, he's a very important uh, uh, man in the United States. You were mad for, for not saying yes? Yeah, 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 yeah of course, yeah. But after that, we, 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 uh, 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 he uh, published this score and uh, uh, Two years ago, I, I went to New York and I, I played this song in uh, Carnegie Hall. <laughs> it was <laughs> so it's a long travel long, from the yeah, from yeah. A Björk concert in 2005, and then playing in the Carnegie Hall with a hang. It's yeah, a, it was it was uh, um, because Piete it's a guy. Piete performed. No, no, Piete it's a to the yes, Piete it's a. Ah, that's, that was the first time, and uh, then the Baltic um, composer no, no, uh, played on the Carnegie Hall. Yeah. So, yeah, we could talk forever <laughs> about all these things and, and also about the hang. Uh, we're, we're sort of getting to the end, and um, uh, we're in uh, Riga National Library uh, in, in Latvia, and this is the last day of the Baltic Sea Festival, and uh, it's been fantastic to have Nora Ikstena and Raimond Stiegels with us to, to talk about music and literature, the Baltic Sea, and um, everything else we touched upon. Um, now it's soon going to be time for Handel's Messiah in, at Bärvald Hallen in Stockholm, so we say thanks from Riga and um, uh, have a nice last concert night for the Baltic Sea Festival. Thank you. <laughs>